So we're here with uh, ACTU <coughs> President me. Jed Carney at the uh, Jobs Embassy outside Parliament House on Budget Day 2017. Jed, why is the trade union movement here today in such numbers? Well, this is Budget Week and Budget Week is pretty important because the budget for a federal government uh, really epitomises what their priorities are, um, where they, what they hold dear and where they want this country to head. And what we've heard so far that's coming out of this budget, we are very fearful. We're fearful for young people, we're fearful for people who are unemployed or vulnerable, and we're fearful for people who rely on a good steady job or otherwise to make a living. Well, there's two things that we've heard about this budget. One is <coughs> Scott Morrison's declaration about good debt and bad debt. And the other one is an indication from what we've seen leaked so far that people are going to... The user pay principle has been applied uh, quite heavily this time around. It, are poor people and, and workers now going to be paying for the future here in this project? Well, you just look at what they're going to do to university students. I mean, already it's really hard for these young kids to, to get by. They're employed in the black economy or in precarious work where they're underpaid, they're exploited in their, in their workplace. Um, their government is making it more expensive. They're increasing the fees for university and they're lowering the threshold of when they have to pay back these enormous debts, which means, you know, it's going to be even harder for them. They're um, cutting university budgets by heavens knows how much. So we're hearing that they're going to do. So life for young people, if they're at university or just even if they're trying to get by, is going to be really hard. We know in some areas we've got 30% youth unemployment. We doubt very much is going to be anything in this budget that will tackle that. Well, all we've heard so far from, from, from the government over the last few months has basically been to, to cut, hasn't it? I mean, we cut, you know, we, we still don't know what they're going to do about Medicare, but it looks like there could be more cuts on the horizon for health fund. <clears throat> we know that public schools are facing cuts to education funding. Um, job programs are being cut. It's harder for people to get welfare and to, and to, to actually try and get ahead. Are we, are we actually now, is this the revenge of the, of the baby boomers? Because it looks like we're taxing the future, taxing the future generations for the sins of the, of the, of the older people. Yeah, I think there are some baby boomers that don't want to be doing this. I think there are some right. of us who think yes. that this is not good policy. I think it is pretty much, by and large, ideological, neoliberal, trickle-down theory at its worst. Um, you know, this government still believes that if we give massive handouts to corporations, if we drop taxes, if we have small government, that all that will trickle down to us, to workers, to young people. You know, we've had 30 years of this. Uh, we have 40% uh, of the working population now in insecure, precarious work. We've got nearly 30% youth unemployment in some sectors of our economy. University and an education is more expensive than ever. Healthcare budgets have been slashed and burned. The public sector has been absolutely cut to bits. And really, people's lives are nowhere better off. Are we at the point now where we're not going to accept this, perhaps, anymore? I mean, I don't know how, if you can believe this too much, but the opinion polls seem to indicate that Malcolm Turnbull is incredibly unpopular with a lot of people, despite everything that he's done to try and shore up his own popularity. Uh, are we seeing through all the smoke and mirrors now of the trickle-down stuff, do you think? I really hope so. And you have to look at the little tidbits, the crumbs that Malcolm Turnbull has, well, it's been leaked that he's going to throw us uh, this budget. He's, I think, hearing that um, fight back that you're talking about. He's hearing that people are unhappy with the situation. So he says, okay, we'll build something. You know, we'll give some money to infrastructure and um, we'll unfreeze the Medicare rebate, only, even though it was only supposed to be unfrozen by the time he said it will be anyway. Um, he's trying to make it desperately look like he's doing something for the people who are feeling you know, dislocated and disenfranchised and who are really struggling. But if you look at these things carefully, they're just tinkering. They're not really showing that he has thrown off the ideology of neoliberalism at all. It, it, it seems he hasn't at all. And I think perhaps his visit with um, Donald Trump last week really highlighted that. I mean, you know, very gung-ho with the Americans on Syria and Iraq and Afghanistan, um, willing to back up, you know, mil aggressive military moves against North Korea, applauding, it's seemingly applauding Trump for taking health care away from 24 million Americans through the repeal of Obamacare yeah. um, and, and, and tax loopholes for the rich. I mean, Turnbull seems more and more out of touch with people and that, that can only be a good thing, right? <laughs> kind of be a good thing if you would like to see the uh, the back end of this government which you know 
We're here today at the embassy, the workers' embassy, which has been set up by the MUA, who have really borne the brunt of some terrible, terrible um, uh, policy decisions of this government. Uh, we're seeing domestic shipping routes. Now, these aren't exporting routes, they're not importing routes. These are routes going from Australian city to Australian city, um, where these workers have lost their jobs completely, then replaced by foreign ships with crews getting paid two bucks an hour. Um, you know, we've really seen them at the at the hard end of anti-union legislation. Um, and so it's been really important that they've set this embassy up today. The whole union movement's down here to support them because the message simply is the budget needs to address jobs. It needs to deliver good, decent jobs we can rely on. And we need a strong social safety net. That isn't hard. It's not going to happen, though, is it? I mean, I don't think anybody... Uh on, on, on the non-government side of politics is probably any hope. No, I don't think it's going to happen at all.